Guys, hey, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me. These are my two Model Ys. This is my 2023 Long Range Model Y. This is the 2024. Both of them have hardware for full self-driving computer. And today I want to talk about uh, the difference between autopilot and FSD. A friend asked me, they're looking at a Tesla, they're, they're a new buyer for the first time, they're wondering what the difference is between FSD, the full self-driving package for $8,000, what's the base autopilot, how does it work, what's the difference, what, asked me what, what my recommendation was. So luckily I have both cars. This car here, this 2023, just has the base autopilot. Okay, no FSD on it. This one here has the full self-driving package fully paid for on it. And so I want to take a, both cars on a test drive. I want to show you the differences between each because there are some differences that might make you want to consider buying the full self-driving package. All right, guys, so uh, this is the 2023 uh, Model Y long range. This has the uh, just f autopilot only. If we go to the autopilot screen here, you can see you can either do auto steer or traffic aware cruise control. So if, you, if I go to here, traffic aware cruise control, that means it's only going to adaptive cruise. It won't steer itself. So I always recommend just doing auto steer. And that way it's going to do adaptive cruise and it's going to steer itself in the lane. This is the base package that comes on all new Teslas right now. And it has for a while. Um, it's included. And if you're new to Tesla and you haven't had, you know, really any experience with this kind of like full self-driving stuff, this probably would be sufficient for you. You probably wouldn't really like want to have anything additional. There is some annoyances with autopilot and I want to, that's the point of this video is I want to show you some of these annoyances that we have that the full self-driving package kind of eliminates. Now with, with the autopilot, it's really meant for like highway cruising. Like when you would set your cruise control, that's when you'd set autopilot for this regular autopilot system. It does a really good job. It stays in the lane for you. It adaptive cruises for, for the car in front of you. It'll even go down to zero. So let's say you're in stop and go traffic. It will go all the way down, slow down to zero, go and it will go forward. So like you could be like in, you know, like rush hour, gridlock traffic, stop and go traffic. And it would like, it will just like completely just stay in the lane and you know, just keep, keep up with the car in front of you. And you, it can be kind of like a little more relaxing than like, in stop and go traffic which is pretty stressful a couple things it's not going to do for you is it doesn't change lanes which that might seem obvious but but when you see how full self-driving works you would you'll understand why i say that it's not changing lanes um, it's not stopping at stop signs it's not stopping at stoplights so if i put on autopilot right now i can it's just one click down on this stock the 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 drive selector stock if i push it down it activates it and it would blow right through the stop sign so that's why really you don't want to use it on city streets because it's not stopping at stoplights, it's not stopping at stop signs, it's not turning, it's basically just cruise and auto and steer itself. So I never use it in this car unless I'm on the freeway. So I'm going to head to the freeway. I want to show you how it works. I'll activate it and show you some of the quirks. All right, guys, I'm just getting on the freeway here. I want to show you how autopilot works. At, to activate it, I just push this down once, and it act, and it activates it for me. So uh, the blue lines on the screen, that means that autopilot is active. It's going to steer itself in the lane. It can roll. It tells you your max speed limit here. I, I can roll this up. So if I want to set the speed to speed limit 65, I want, if I want to be at 67, it'll go 67 as long as there's room in front of us to uh, to go. If it gets into a gets to a car, it'll slow down and follow that car. So it's it, it, this is pretty comfortable. It's nice. Where this starts getting annoying, guys, um, is if I need to change lanes. Okay, I'm ready to change lanes. I have my autopilot on. To change lanes, there's a couple things I can do. I can just jerk the wheel over. It, that, that just I actually just did that and it deactivated it. So let me reactivate it. Or another way you can use you if you put on the signal. It'll loosen up the steering wheel. It completely disengages autopilot, and then you have to push this down to re-engage it. All right, when I put the turn signal on, like I'm gonna get back into this right lane, I turn this turn signal on, it deactivates it, the cruise control is off, the steering's off, and so it, like, it's not a smooth process because when you take when, when you take your foot off the gas or the, the accelerator pedal, the car slows down. It naturally slows down itself with this regenerative braking that it has, and so, Every time you want to change lanes, you have to disengage, re-engage. So I need to get over here, and it disengaged it, and I have to like 
try to preemptively push down the pedal to try to match my speed so I'm not getting like a speed uh, lag where, there, where I'm slowing down or speeding up because I'm changing lanes. And it's super annoying, almost to the point where it's not like, if I'm doing a lot of highway driving, I'm buying the full self-driving package or, a, or paying the $100 per month because it is super annoying. Because on the highway like this, you know, you're changing lanes a lot. And especially when it's busier and you're trying to like, you know, if there's someone slow, you're trying to go around them. I mean, it's just disengaging this all the time. It gets really annoying. And so, and I have to keep my hand on the wheel in order for it to know that I'm paying attention. So it requires an input here. Uh, in order to change lanes, I've got to disengage autopilot every single time. Now it wouldn't be that big of a deal if I never have had experienced the full self-driving package. And Tesla gives you like, usually when you buy the car, they'll give you like a month of full self-driving free. And then every so often when they've updated the, the software, they have given, they'll give like a month free in some cases. And with that month free, you're able to see like how well the FSD works. And their, their, their hope is that like you see how well it works how much better it is than autopilot and that you subscribe to the service or that you buy the pay the eight thousand dollars for it now is it worth eight thousand dollars up front i don't know that i don't really answer that question guys but what i do know is that in the future and probably not so far distant future is that this car will be able to drive itself they're probably going to increase the price of it because it's going to be so advanced that's my that's my theory one more demonstration here. I just want to show you. So I'm cruising here. There's no luckily there's no traffic. When there's no traffic in front of you, you don't really need to change lanes. You can just cruise, and autopilot works just fine for that. But what's when you when you have when there's traffic and you have to start changing lanes, you got you got a bunch of merges and things like that. So if I turn on my blinker to to go into this left lane here, I don't have my feet on the pedals. I turn that and I put a slight pressure and I turn over. Look how I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down here. I've got to put my foot back on the pedal, re regain my speed, and then reactivate autopilot with the stock every time I change lanes. And so, guys, that is where autopilot has a big flaw. And I want to get back over now. I've got to match my speed with my pedal. I've got to push the pedal down and then I've got to push this down. It's not smooth. It's very clunky. It's not a. I don't. I don't like. I don't like driving this car with base autopilot and as FSD gets better and better uh, autopilot's going to seem even more difficult to drive with my, my personal opinion all right guys I just switched cars I'm in the model Y that has the full self-driving package here it's included now this one I don't pay monthly this one had this one I transferred full self-driving package from a model 3 that I had that included it and it transferred to this car uh, so you have a couple options when, when buying a new Tesla. You can either buy it outright for $8,000 or you can pay $100 a month subscription fee. The cost has changed over the, over the several, several years. So it hasn't always been $8,000. It's been $10,000, dollars $15,000. It's also been $200 a month. It's now only $100 a month. I think in the future it's going to be a more expensive when it becomes unsupervised. So right now it's supervised full self-driving where you have to pay attention. You have to you know, kind of still monitor, see what's going on here. But when that changes in the coming months, whenever that happens, you know, whether it's this year, next year, when that happens, uh, it's, I think it's going to be more expensive because that's really going to allow you to like not be in the car, but you don't have to really pay attention to what's going on, which is unprecedented, right? And then a step beyond that's going to be the car can drive without you in it. Like it can just go run errands for you. It can go pick people up. It could be a ride share. It could be a robo taxi. Um, it can go pick your kids up from school, things like that. When it's like that, it's going to be probably even more expensive for the full self-driving package. So the question is whether you pay $100 a month for it or $8,000 up front right now. You, you pay $8,000 for it now and it... Um, you know, you have it for the life of the car. And Tesla has in the last, you know, year and a half or so, they've allowed you to transfer that to a new car when you bought a new car. So it's like kind of you buy it one time and you can transfer it. I don't know if they're always going to allow you to do that. They do now, but they haven't always allowed you to do, to do that, essentially, to, to transfer to a new car. But I want to show you some of the features here of the car. I don't have full self-driving activated. It, it's helpful if you have an address, like a, a navigation, something in the navigation to navigate to. 
you can set your home and work address so you can just swipe those very easily if you want to go to your home or work and then just put in your destinations when you're driving that's when FSD works the best because then it knows where to stop where to go where to turn where to exit so forth so I'm gonna go on the freeway here I just kind of the same route that I did with the other car that had autopilot and just show you how much better it is and you can kind of decide for yourself here's the good thing with FSD is you can I say just buy the car that you that you want to buy right now whether it's the Model Y, 3, SX, Cybertruck, uh, they come with a 30-day trial of FSD, and you can kind of try it out. And then I would say go a month without it and see how you like the car without FSD. If it's livable, you don't have to buy it. Uh, and then you can subscribe on a monthly basis. Pay $100 a month the month you want it, month to month. You're not locked in. And then you can also always pay the $8,000. Now, even pay, if you pay the $100... Per month it doesn't subtract the eight thousand dollar amount down lower so let's say you, you for a year you pay a hundred dollars a month twelve hundred dollars into the eight that into full self-driving well it doesn't make full self-driving twelve hundred dollars cheaper it's still eight thousand dollars in a year if you want to buy it essentially okay I'm gonna activate touch this down it activates it uh, the cameras see the speed limits, so it's GPS-based, map-based, and vision-based system where it's seeing the speed limits, it's seeing the lane lines, it's staying in the lane lines. Here's the cool thing with, with FSD, guys, I'll show you. This is, this is where this is so awesome to go. If there's a car in front of me that I need to pass or I want to pass, it'll just go right around it. It'll signal, it'll go right around it. It won't, like, it, it won't, I, I don't have to intervene at all. That's the cool thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a lane change here. I don't have to, you know, there's no real, there's, the car in front of me is far enough away that it's not impeding my speed, but if I put on my blinker, if I want to get in this left lane right here, I put on the blinker, see how it just moves right over, don't touch anything, don't have to reactivate it, Autopilot, the FSD stays intact with lane changes, which is awesome, it's so annoying with autopilot that they, those dis get disengage every time, if I want to move back, I just touch the blinker, it moves back, Auto the, the FSD stays intact, stays going and I don't have to do anything now if I start going faster here I'm gonna speed up a little bit go see how so I speed up here it's just changing the lane automatically it's like okay this car's going slower it's just changing the lane it signaled it got over it knows where the car all the cars around me are because of all the cameras it has depending on the speed it'll either stay in the left lane uh, if there's slower cars in the right lane and it sees slower cars it won't go in the right lane so real it's really intuitive I mean this thing's very smart uh, it's only a matter of time before this thing's driving itself completely, and it's a robo taxi. I mean, I can really see that happening because this car really is. Uh, th this software is very, very advanced. Now I'm set to exit in 0.8 miles on this next upcoming exit here. Sometimes it cuts a little close. Like if I was at, like, here's the half mile exit sign. I probably would have gotten behind this car and just you know rode it out for a mile, but it'll like. You know, it's probably going to speed up a little bit here and get in front of this car. Let's see what it does here. It needs to speed up. Yeah, it's speeding up here. And it's turned on the turn signal. Now, when it gets off the freeway, like I don't have to do anything. I don't have to disengage it. With autopilot, you have to disengage autopilot like if you want to get off the freeway and so um, this does it automatically so FSD has a lot of benefits guys like it's super smart had you asked me like a year ago or a year and a half ago is it worth it I would have said no um, it wasn't worth it I think it's worth it now pretty cool it's pretty cool to see the progress of it and how good it's gotten in such a short amount of time in the last six months it's it's gotten significantly better and in another six months to a year, it's going to be even better, which is pretty cool to, to imagine. So, um, guys, my recommendation is uh, definitely try it out. Definitely see if you like it. The car is definitely capable without it. Like, you can just drive it like a regular car all the time, right? But once you've experienced it and see how smooth it is, how intuitive it is, how smart it is, um, where I find it especially helpful is on like driving in the city the city streets things like that I don't need help with that but where I think it's cool is like I was out of town 
a few months ago and I'm just trying to navigate like city streets and, 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 and trying to find places. I just had FSD take me everywhere and I just sat here and watched it and it was so stress free because I didn't have to worry about missing an exit, where what freeway to be on, what lane to be in. It just knew all that. It did all that. So it's really cool that it can do that. So I'm impressed with it, guys. I'm a big advocate of it. Anyways, guys, uh, that's kind of my, just, just kind of like an overview of FSD versus autopilot. Uh, FSD is so much better. It should be for $8,000. It should be, and it is. And it's only going to be better, I think. So I think it's I think it's a worthwhile investment to pay the $8,000. Um, if you don't want to pay it up front, pay it monthly in the form of a $100 payment subscription basis and kind of go from there. But it's definitely worth it. I, I love it. And... I'm excited to see how advanced it's going to continue to get because it's it's really improved. Guys, so thanks for watching the video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.